Scotty, energize. Energize. Energize the Lawn Friend podcast, show number 35, but who's counting? I stopped counting at one because I live life one breath and one podcast at a time. I'm your host. My IQ is half my cholesterol, and I'm happy to be here speaking to you from the L.A. radio studio in the beautiful pastoral ports of Call Village. San Pedro, California, producer Mike Stark on the other side of the glass, shaking his head, wondering when I'm going to say something that means something. Well, here we go. Tonight is all about the birds, specifically the owls. Okay. Now, for those who think like I do, who are of the cosmic mind, the synchronous mind, minds that put two and two together, connect dots, follow signs, you know, like the Mel Gibson uh, soliloquy and signs. He's talking to Joaquin Phoenix, and he says, are you the kind of guy that follows signs, believes that there are no accidents? Okay, so just to, let me just set the, set the mood here okay so August in the evening of August the 9th Barbara Friend my my mom she passed away after an unsuccessful cancer surgery I think she knew she was ready to go because when I, my brother and I saw her in the operating, in the, in the waiting room, heading into the operating theater, I said to her, don't be afraid, you're going to the Shire. And she was afraid, but she loved Tolkien and she loved Lord of the Rings. And, and I think that's where she went, to the Shire. So what happened after that? Okay, she passes away. Okay. And for the next several days, the family is processing this. I went through this on these shows last August. I'm just setting the table. On the uh, 21st of August, my Aunt Esther, my mom's older sister, my angel aunt, she doesn't survive a heart valve operation in Florida. And she passes away. She was born 11 years before my mom. And she died 11 days after my mom. On August the 27th, my my cousin Jill, so close with her mom, brings my aunt back to Los Angeles to be buried at the Forest Lawn Mortuary, next to her parents, my grandparents, my Bubby and Zadie. That day, I have the ashes. My mom wanted to be cremated, so my brother and I have are at the gravesite with her ashes. We leave the funeral, which is beautiful, and we head out to the desert, San Jacinto, Peter Gabriel, San Jacinto, to scatter her ashes. We scatter her ashes. My friend Robert Cruz, who was a Native American, who was born on the other side of the mountain, comes out to drive me back to my mom's apartment, 120 miles away, where I'm staying at, out in Oak Park. Oak Park. Okay? The street that that we find, serendipitously, that leads to the to the plateau where we cast mom's ashes is called Los Robles. Los Robles, translated in 
it means the oaks. The hospital that my mother died at was Los Robles Hospital, where she lived out in Oak Park. Oak Park, see, oak, 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 all this oak. The day, the night after we scattered my mom's ashes, I am awoken at 2 o'clock in the morning by this. This cooing outside her window in the oak tree outside her window. So I go on Facebook and I say, there's a cooing outside my window. It's 2 in the morning. Who could that be? And Robert Cruz writes me a Facebook, sends me a Facebook message and tells me that the cooing of a sitting owl in Native American culture means that the beloved have, the, the departed have crossed over safely. Okay. I tell my brother that the next day. And <laughs> all is well. Now, Robert also says she wasn't alone. Your aunt was with her. He intuitively knows this. Okay. Now, <laughs> holidays. Recent holidays. So we're all dealing with stuff. Our life. We're living. And I'm doing my show. And I'm working on this. Our interviews for this book. I've been helping a doctor in New York with. And and I go to Vegas. I said, you know what? I'm going to go to Vegas. I'm going to take Megan to Vegas for Thanksgiving with my dad. My brother, Rick. My sister, Michelle. And, fam and all the family. My nephew, Sam. Aaron and everybody's going to be in town and so we have this big Thanksgiving the turkey is a bird that can't fly but so Thanksgiving morning I get a text from my cousin Jill and she calls me Lonnie okay not Lon Lonnie Lonnie Call me immediately. Something amazing is happening. So I pick up my cell phone, my new i, my new iPhone, and I dial her. What's up, Jilly? Lon. She's shaking. Yesterday, my friend Maria and I were talking, and I was really sad. I'm having a hard time the last couple weeks. I miss my mom so much, and I haven't gotten a sign. There's, I haven't gotten a sign. My friends have called me and said that Esther came to them in her dream. I've got nothing. And, and Maria said, you have to be patient, Jill. So this morning, Lonnie, I walk in the garage and I move a bucket from the shelf in the garage. I'm going to get some paper towels. And what do I see sitting on the shelf of the garage? An owl. And she's freaking. She said, listen to me. This owl, it's staring right at me. It's sitting on a shelf. I've been in Florida for 27 years. I've never seen an owl. Doesn't mean they're not there. It just means she hasn't seen them. And it's staring at me, and I'm taking a picture of him now, and I'm sending it to you, and I'm talking to him, and I'm saying, I'm talking to Lonnie on the phone, and it's blinking its eyes. He's at Rick's. They're having Thanksgiving, and it's blinking its eyes. It's the most beautiful bird. So she sends me this photo of this just enchanting, almost sin but in a, the most beautiful way, kind of sinister but not owl. 
on her shelf in her garage. I don't even know how it got in the garage. We never leave the door open. My interpretation instantly was, there, that's it. There she is. You asked for for her. There she is. Talk to her. So she went on and talked to her for quite a while, and then finally she opened the garage door, and that was it. So um, I know. This, this is... <laughs> Okay, so to continue the synchronicities, the next day, Meg and I stay at the Artisan, this bizarre, beautiful, boutique, odd, intimate, all red and black, paintings on the ceiling, very French hotel in Vegas. Maybe 100 rooms. It's off the Strip. It's off, it's off the Sahara and the 15 under the freeway. You could drive right by. You'd miss it. And uh, we we go into the hotel. We check in. And we're, before we go out, you know, we, uh, we're looking around the lobby and stuff. And there's library books. It's like, li- it's like a library. So there's books, all these old books on all these shelves. So I go over to one of the shelves, and I just randomly pick a book. And it's a book about owls, a children's book. And I go, Meg... And she goes, yep. <laughs> See, my kid, she she just says, yep, that's dad. Okay. Now, because you're not supposed to be dazzled by this stuff. Once synchronicities start to flow into your life and it becomes the theme of your life, you don't get dazzled by it. You just accept these miracles as part of your life. Okay. Now, in the evening, we're going out and... We go into this bar area, which looks like The Shining. You know, there's this kind of random alt-rock sort of dude behind the bar, and he makes me a, a, a cherry fusion sky vodka on the rocks. And I look at the monitors, and there's in black and white, there's a movie playing on five screens around the bar. And there's no volume, and I just look at the screen, and I know exactly what film it is. Hitchcock's The Birds. And I said, Meg, that's The Birds. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. I know every scene, every line in this film. I I, I could fill in the dialogue without the sound. (sighs) Okay. The music you hear in the background is my nephew Sam's Lament, which he wrote about his grandma my mom the week she was she week she passed away he's uh, scoring he's a future soundtrack artist he set up his room with all the equipment to make music and i'm very proud of him he's he's exactly one year younger than my daughter and he's he's going to be something else my brother-in-law well he's my brother's married to joe's sister for forever 30 years and joe joe is an accomplished drummer musician and he's very random and odd i love him he's born one we're born one day apart in 1956 and so there was a very musical night at thanksgiving everybody i know this is not a linear rap but we're Joe says, have you heard this? I've written a song called Facebook Friends. (laughs) And he plays it for us on his computer. And I'm saying, send me that song because I'm going to play it on my show. So to lighten up the uh, air, and because so much about, for my my audience for this podcast, for Energize, comes probably exclusively from social networking and from Facebook, because I have no marketing and no promotion beyond the torch that people carry on their own. Uh, so I'm going to debut Facebook friends here on Energize Salon Friend Podcast, and then I'll be back and more owls and more synchronicities and more of everything.
smoke from